to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it. We have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to Well Design Business. It's Power Talk Friday. Today we have a sponsored show by my dear friend, my co-author in the Power Talk Friday Experts Volume 1 book, my instructor at Luann University, and of course, my go-to accounting expert, Peter Lang, the designer CPA. Pete has been helping design firms with year-round, hands-on, cash flow analysis and tax planning since 2002. But here's the thing, as left brain as Pete is, he loves being around creative people like you and me, which is why his accounting firm, the Designer CPA, works specifically and only with interior designers. And he also specializes in part-time CFO services for our industry. There is so much more to what Pete offers than just tax services. Of course, he also also offers those solutions. But the point is that Pete understands interior designers on levels that you might not even understand yourself. And he is an amazing guy to have in your corner. I'm just saying. He's no stranger to this podcast. However, if you haven't heard of Pete yet, or you don't know him personally yet, trust me, you'll want to be his bestie by the end of this episode. He always has clear, honest advice that cuts through the noise and gets right down to your bottom line. I'm incredibly excited because it is confirmed that Peter will be joining us in Orlando this November 2023 at Luann Live. He'll be an exhibitor there so you can meet him, learn about his services. And he is also one of my VIP experts for the last day VIP experience. So if you signed up for that already, or you're planning to, I think there's about 10 seats left in real time as I'm recording this, um, you might get some quality one-on-one time with Pete. When you buy a VIP VIP ticket. You get the VIP cocktail party Tuesday night as part of your ticket. And on Wednesday, you're going to get two solid hours of round table, small group conversations facilitated by my esteemed co-authors and Lou University instructors. And Peter will be one of them. (laughs) So to learn more and to get your ticket, go to luannlive.com. I'm looking forward to seeing you in person then. And I'm so happy that Pete will be there to join us as well. Now, when I say to him, just what have you been busy with? Okay. I told you he's a numbers guy and he has been crunching the numbers. We've all been asking for it and it's finally here. Pete's interior design industry benchmarks. It's the report that you're going to want to get. If you've ever wondered, what do profits look like for other interior design businesses at my size? How much does the average interior design principal pay themselves annually? Or what do standard monthly overhead costs usually add up to? Then this report is for you. This guidebook has every benchmark number and thorough video explanations to help you make better decisions and to help you succeed in running your interior design business. Pete is here to tell us all about that and more today. So let's get on to it, shall we? Hi, Pete. Thanks so much for joining me on A Well-Designed Business again. Hey, Lou. It's good to be back. It's been a while. It it has been a while, and I'm super excited, Um, especially because I just love, love, love your down-to-earth advice, and I love the way you explain it in words that I can understand, and that makes me very happy. (laughs) Well, we as an industry, I call myself part of the industry, too. We've been through a lot over the last couple of years, huh? Yes, yes. It's funny because um, I I don't know, 
I didn't tell you this, but in your intake form, because, you know, even though we're good friends and you're a co-author and all the things, you well, everybody has to come through the front door, right? They have to do the process, right? I, I need to follow the rules. Yep. Exactly, right? So, but in your intake form, there was a line that you said, I'm pretty sure I'm the only CPA in the entire country that works with and specializes only with interior designers, right? And of course, I suspected that. Of course, I expected that. But it was just such a like a throwback to a Fred Burns only, right? Yeah. Like, And, and like if there is someone the- listening who can claim otherwise, I'd love to hire them. <laughs> <laughs> I need help. So That's come so, on. Right? that's that's a great perspective not like oh there's competition it's like i need help come join forces <laughs> absolutely well it's true because you know what i i do refer people to you all the time and um what will happen is people will say they'll come they'll come back and they'll say oh well he's 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 booked and he this and that and i'm like ah, i know i know what to tell you and then i have my chairman of the boards and i'm like pete it's mm-hmm. my cob going to need a little yep. in the front door here. <laughs> well, I always say, let's just say, I mean, doing taxes, you know, you can only imagine how exciting that is, right? So <laughs> we had in my industry and in my in public accounting, we had a uh, employment crisis way before everyone else. Oh. So, I mean, now it's even more fun than it used to be with all the changing what laws. What is that? Why? Like, are pe- like... I mean, I don't think it's exciting oh, to work with I don't think all day. we should go there because then the <laughs> last, I feel like the first episode I was ever on, I, I bashed uh, the entire um, old suit um, <laughs> in my industry. Um, but listen, there's a lot of older people in my industry who expect nothing to change and all the kids coming out of school to not change at all. And uh, they let's mm-hmm. just say they can have better opportunities working less and having a better career and a more meaningful career and make more money. And until my industry uh, realizes that, nothing's going to okay. change. So they're coming out young and they're not really ready to be self-employed. But they Well, so dynamic- you're graduating from college. You go to a job fair. You got someone saying, we'll pay you this much. You're going to work nine to five, Monday to Friday. And then you got people in my industry who was like, yeah, there's this thing called tax season. We're not going to pay you as much. And you you, you got to work uh, 12 hour days for three months, but we'll buy you dinner. And these kids are like, <laughs> what? Are you hey, kidding what, me? What century are you in, yes, right? They're exactly. Like- <laughs> and I have to do these continuing education things with these people. And I just bang my head on my desk. And I'm like, when are we? We got a real problem here. It's like, yeah, when are we going to you know, do anything about it? Every other industry is going to a four-day work week, practically. And we're like, still like, well, you might have to work on Sunday, too, but hopefully you don't mind that. <laughs> okay. So just a little side thing there. <laughs> I didn't All think right, I was so- going to get going on, on that already, but okay. <laughs> okay. So, so here's the thing. I'm like a little spinning head here because there's so many insanely valuable topics that we could talk about together because I, I know the pain points that designers are going through. And I'm like, I, I don't think I'm going to worry about taking it in any particular order because there's just t- three or four critical areas that I know are like a one-off question. You have a great explanation for it and it will answer a lot of things for designers. Mm-hmm. So one of them is what is the deal between a cash basis and accrual basis? And what happens when our bookkeepers tell us, don't worry about it. The cash basis, you know, is yeah. fine. Okay. So this is a, this can be a super um, uh, complex and boring topic, but I think I figured out how to explain it. And if you have a bookkeeper or a CPA who, listen, when you start out, uh, it's super easy to uh, pick cash basis on the tax return. And that's what you got to go by. Whatever someone picks on the tax return. Now, if you're like looking at your tax return, and you're like, oh, I don't, oh, based on the story, I don't like the answer to that. It can be changed. So don't okay. worry about that. Uh, what I'm trying to do with this story that I'm going to tell is just basically give you the confidence if you're listening to say, no, this is the way it needs to be because what if this happens? And if, and if they're like, oh, that, well, whatever, then you, you know, no, it's actually can happen to me and whatever. I'm not saying that the accrual method is 
the best method to be on and every single person should be on it. I'm saying that 95% of designers who are in um, selling product, it makes sense to be on, especially in the last couple of years with the supply chain issues. So I'll get I'll get right into telling the story. Cause it's- so hang on, though, because I just want to clarify mm-hmm. for any people that are like, I'm not even sure what we're talking about yet, right? Because I know most people probably do, but we have others that won't. So basically what you're saying is, if you're an interior designer who sells product, you sell furniture, you know, tile, you know, Anything, all the you're things. You're getting money from the client and then you're marking up and you're going to, in the future, then have to obviously pay for it at your cost with a vendor. Okay. Number one. And if you're a designer, say where your model might be, you know, your typical designer for a day, like you're exchanging money for time, your consultative model, not necessarily not as important your, no. your thing. Okay. So if, but, but to your point, we both know that probably 95% of the interior designers are selling products to their consumers. Okay. So now go ahead and tell us your story. So it's March. We're recording this today in March, but, um, let, we're going to pretend it's November because this just happened a couple of months ago and I, I was I was able to use it. So let's say you've been trying to get this big client for, you know, you've been pitching this and they've dragged their feet and it's right before Thanksgiving and they finally are agreeing to um, sign the contract. They're going to buy $150,000 worth of product. Um, you go, they sign the contract, you go away for Thanksgiving, you come back, maybe it's the first week of December and you get in the mail this 150,000 because you're collecting everything up front. Uh, right. right. Yes. We're collecting yes, everything right? up front. Yes. We're not ordering right? anything yes. until we have the money, <laughs> all the money from the client. Um, right. So now you've got two weeks or three weeks, right? And you're trying to finish up any loose ends for the year, any project ends. And you know that you're closing for the holidays. You're not going to order anything until next year. Now, if you are on the cash basis method on your tax return, you have to pay taxes on that full $150,000. Even though you might be spending seventy five thousand, let's say, right, on product, on and product. you're making seventy. You know, you got a fifty percent profit, right? Um, it doesn't matter. That hundred and fifty thousand dollars has to be paid for. Has taxes need to be paid for in the year you receive the money? Now, let me ask you a couple of questions. Does it have to be paid for in the year you receive the money? strictly because you haven't made the purchases yet to go against it, right? Like I understand, like I haven't, I I technically should pay taxes on 75,000 because that's my net profit on it. But what if I have other expenses that I chop into it and I still end up with a net profit of 30,000 for the year? Or is it, no, it's strictly project married to project. That would be, yeah, I would, I think everything should be married, project married to project anyway, in order so you can track project profitability, yeah. right? right? So that's another whole thing of okay, so why I just opened a the accrual of though is, is good because all of my clients are asking and trying to figure out like, I get it. I, you're showing me over, you know, an overview of these financial statements. I, I kind of understand for the most part. Can you show me um, how much I made on the Smith project though? And I'm like, no, you're, no, you're not tracking all of that with the software you're using. I can't, Mm. I can't, I can't, you're going to have to like recreate it. Um, Mm. So yeah, you could do it in a sense, but I want to focus on. You want to be clean. You want to be clean. Right. So I would call that as like an open proposal, or even if you're still calling it a retainer that sits away and we're matching it with when the vendor product costs are paid in that same period. And then you pay it. Now, I do have a couple of clients on the cash basis that sell product. I'm not saying that you have to do it, but they understand they've been trained for years from me. And I'm like, no problem, guys. But make sure before you leave at the end of the year, you're paying the vendor out all the costs so that we're only paying taxes on that true profit and not the top gross level. Who the hell wants to prepay taxes, right? Right. No. Right. Exactly. And so what ends up happening is sometimes... I'll tell people this and then they go to their bookkeeper and they're like, or they go to their CPA and they're like, well, the cash basis is the simple way to go and it's fine and whatever. It's, it's no problem. He doesn't have to worry about it. I'm like, okay, well then remember that projection I did 
you owe 35,000 more. And they're like, that you didn't do it right. But I'm like, sorry, but right. You've been saving X amount of money because you've been monitoring it. And now it's completely whacked out. And because- there's literally a very simple form we can fill out to switch you so that this doesn't become a problem. Okay. Okay. No, I, it makes sense. I mean, you know, I think this is why sometimes as business owners, certainly I don't imagine we're going to do this in November. I know that at Windowworks, we've never done it in November, but if we go, do get deposits, you know, the last week of December, you know, the VIN man, he'll mm-hmm. hold them all and put them in, in January. <laughs> yes. That's another <laughs> method you could do as well. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. with the with the supply chain issues and installation problems, employment issues and all of the um, the delays, the extra delays, besides just the normal ones that we saw, this this became a bigger issue where the people oh, yeah. that were on the accrual method had a higher client deposit amount, higher retainers that were staying there, yeah. more money that were coming in and in September, or October or whatever. And it was like, we're not going to get around to doing this because we know that we're not, that stuff isn't coming till next summer, you know? That's right. That's so all right. that money that comes in and it's like, we don't even know the vendors we're going to use. So how can we like prepay, get that money out to vendors if we don't even know who specifically we're going to use right. yet? Right, right. Because a lot of times at that point in the designer's process, you know, maybe, maybe a, a lot of it is locked down, but maybe a lot of it is not locked down. It's going to be like fabric A, but it could end up being fabric C if fabric A is going to be back ordered for six months. So you can't just exactly. go to town and start placing purchase orders in two weeks of the year left. And to your point, when it happens at the end of the year like that, it's not like you don't have the month to work on it, but you are at that last month, usually closing down the people who are waiting for the bed to move into the house, not the person yeah. who knows their project isn't going to be installed for six months or a year. Or you've been waiting for a year to finally get this done. It's in and they want it all done for the holidays. And yes, you know, they've yeah, been and you're waiting doing the, the zhuzhing and all this yeah. stuff, right? You're, you're actually getting people ready for their things. Okay. Okay. So the point here, the bottom line is if you have a firm and you do do a, a, any kind of significant volume of purchases and your bookkeeper is saying, ah, sweetie, you can stay cash basis, you at least should push back and question and have an intelligent conversation um, and see if they can convince you, but you don't really yeah, think I mean, that they mean, taxes are share. very important, but also if you're interested in, you know, looking at things, like I said, from a project's basis or seeing the whole picture, right? Mm -hmm. Being able to see, besides just how much money came into the bank account this year and how much left, how how much left the account. Well, you know, what do clients owe us? Who do we have open? Who's who's, um, done? And, you know, certain softwares are only the accrual basis. So you can't even see the cash basis. Um, With QuickBooks Online, you can toggle between both. But if you don't have that both of that detailed information added in, you can toggle toggle back and forth until you're blue in the face and the numbers will stay the same. Oh. Um, so, you know, it just maybe requires – it's possible to put both in all of the details for any software, but some might require more work than others. That's all. And you have, as I recall, you have like an assessment, like a quiz, a simple quiz, not mm-hmm. like, you know, take your whole life and try and figure yes. this out, but a simple quiz that designers for free can fill out on your website. And it kind of pushes and s- pushes back to you. Um, yeah, I it's, guess it's super quick. It's like a uh, Nicole Heimer oh, calls it an instant assessment. Okay. It's not going right. to waste your day. It's a couple of minutes. And how, it was set up, I think it's four or five questions, right? So it's not like we're not asking for the accounting equation. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but what it does is, because I get this question all the time, like, what's the best software, Peter? Tell me which one to do. And I always am like, well, it depends. It depends. And it's not because I don't understand. It's because it depends on your specific needs, your specific business, what you do, your team, uh, and and a lot of other things, right? So these questions will kind of ask you specific things of what you think is important to you, what you mm-hmm. want to see. Um, for example, some people are like, I don't care about anything else, about, but I want the client to be able to access it. I want to be able to have you know everyone on the team. I want it to look pretty. I want it to look nice. I want it to take payments for whatever. And so you might get a result that someone could 
answer other questions because something completely different, like I need comprehensive project management software. I want to see the profitability of every little thing. And so you might get a completely other, different. Uh, a different so answer. It, yep. it helps. What happens is it the, quest, the questions are geared for a designer to analyze really what is important to him or her. And then it says, this software is more likely to give you these features. Yes. And then there's a disclaimer that says, and I, I tell this to everyone, you know, do a trial, um, make sure your entire team does that trial and, and bring everyone before you go and switch. And you're like, I took Peter's assessment. He said, I should do this <laughs> and we're switching tomorrow. Don't do that. Uh, obviously not only just you as an owner doing, um, doing a demo, but if you have an t- internal team, you want to make sure that everyone's on board from a design perspective, a project management perspective. Ev- um, is this going to flow right with the clients and all that stuff? And then also, I shouldn't say, and then everyone involved, right? Um, can your bookkeeper work with that software? Will Are they willing to work with that software? Because some bookkeepers to- are like, I'm married to this and I'm not going over there. Right, right. And so right. then you've got to kind of um, make an assessment that says, okay, the um, pros of this that came up for me as a business owner and my team, is it more important than what's lacking in the software that I know my really good bookkeeper has to be in? And then you have to make a decision, you know, based on that. Okay. Um, but, uh, but it really is quick, super easy, and it will give you an answer to um, where, you know, the options are that work best for you based on what's important for your business today. Mm. And we'll put the links in the show notes, but that's at the designer CPA.com. Yeah, you can go right the, to my homepage right and it's right there. Yeah. Now that leads me into one of the other things that I did want to bring up with you today is, you know, at the end you mentioned there, and will your bookkeeper work with it? Because sometimes a bookkeeper will stick their feet in the mud and say, no, blah, blah, blah. So talk to me about, you know, how do we, um, what should we be thinking about when we are vetting, interviewing a bookkeeper? And how about even also we have a bookkeeper, what should we expect as far as, Mm. Yeah. I'm going to say the word transparency because I have to tell you, I have designer clients that I've worked with. They're like, my bookkeeper won't sit down and explain that to me. And I'm like, wait, your bookkeeper won't sit down and explain to you the trail that your money is taking through your business. That Did you just hear that sentence? Like, did you actually just <laughs> like, like, I'm like, I don't care if, you know, you're as dense about finance as I am. That bookkeeper has to sit down and work with you, right? Yeah. So well, what are some of the tips there? Yeah. So if you're... L- if you're looking for a new bookkeeper or you don't have one right now, one of the first questions I would ask some a, pro- a prospect of a new one is just if they work in the industry or I should say, do you have any interior design clients? Now, if they say no, that's not a deal breaker, mm. but I think that it's important for them to at least have a couple so that they know how fun it is in our industry with the complex <laughs> financial because it's right. It is. Um, and if so, they, if they don't know about it, then they're only focused on like, how hard can it be? I'm reconciling checking accounts and I'm reconciling credit cards. What's, what's your problem? You know, like everything comes yeah. through, through the bank, we put it in, it reconciles and we're calling it a day. We're not even talking about, you know, what we talked about before with right. like, how projects work and, right. and where, you know, the timing of everything. Uh, so that's a good way to start. And if you think that the person, um, even though they say like, oh, I've worked with one before, um, th- 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 like I said, that doesn't mean that the person can't work. But I, I think it would be nice for them to at least have had one or two, at, at least in their career, so that they know. And then yeah. the second part is just... Um, kind of coming up with just very simply, do you just do uh, reconciliations where you're just going to reconcile the the bank account and the credit card? Or do you do um, other things besides that, like accounts receivable and accounts payable? And what I mean by that is like, do you put the bills in and make sure that the bills are getting paid on time and you're putting the details in of when the due date so that I can look at the accounts payable report and be like, did we pay that bill? Mm. Um, and then accounts receivable, like, are you putting the payments in? Um, 
as a design fee or product, or are you just throwing it into sales and calling it a day? Um, So I've had clients, you know, show me their books or prospects that came in and I'm like, they're like, well, can you help me figure out my profitability? I'm like, no, you've got a big thing called sales right here. I don't know how that, they're like, well, how much did I make on profit profitability? I'm like, I have no idea because your books aren't, you know, you don't have any details in here. No one's breaking out. They're just throwing uh, cash deposits to sales on day one when it comes in and that. So yeah. are they, do they have, not are they willing, I shouldn't say that. Do they have the time capacity mm. to be able to work a little extra harder on on you as a client? Because mm-hmm. if they have experience with designers, they know this isn't just doing the hair salon or yeah. the grocery store down the street or, or whatever that is that right. I'm coming up with that may or may not be as complex as you. They know that it's more like job costing project details, that kind of stuff, that it's going to take more input. And their bill might be higher than if you ask your friend who owns a different type of business, uh, how much do you pay for your bookkeeper? Mm. Well, if they're willing to do more, uh, and help you in the details, obviously their bill is going to be higher than if you ask someone else and who's just reconciling some accounts and doing that. So I see that well, a lot. And it makes sense. It makes total sense. I mean, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but what I'm hearing is if I even just think about like a pizza parlor, right? A pizza parlor is taking in money every day. Maybe they're taking it in, in you know, cash and carry. You Maybe they're taking in in delivery guys. Maybe they're taking in because they, you know, did a bat mitzvah for somebody and they had a, you know, a little catering project on the side. But the fact is it's all money for food. Yep. It's all the same thing. And all of their bills going out are bills for food. <laughs> I mean, you have your payroll and your taxes and things like that. But the, the nuance, what you're saying is that there are some designers that work with bookkeepers that the bookkeeper processes the money in, in the same bucket. And that's not right. And right. there has to be a different bucket for design fees. There has to be a bucket for product fees. Otherwise, I guess like what you're also saying is, not so much for what the IRS cares about, but more for your ability to look at your business at a glance and understand, are you selling jobs profitably? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, because doing the tax return, quite frankly, like, I don't care how it's broken it doesn't matter. I just want to make sure in you're reporting all your like, money. Yep. Um, yeah. And I don't care if you made books, it on pizza or wraps. QuickBooks <laughs> just- Online is, you know, has like a ridiculously high market share for any business. So they're... They've got a pretty standard what's called chart of accounts, and I have like a template that that I provide um, that you can buy on my website that kind of allows you to put the information in so that that can get tracked in the future. So the bookkeeper can follow that trail. So if it is somebody that you respect and says, hey, I'm interested in learning this industry, at least there's the cheat sheet for let's start with this template. These are the different charts of accounts that we should be paying attention to and allotting things towards. And and if you have a current bookkeeper who's not doing that because they just didn't know any different um, and you come to them and you're like, listen, I want to I want to clean this, up. clean this up, make it more detailed, chart of accounts. I want you to be able to do that. They might say to you, okay, yeah, I'm willing to do that. It's going to take more. The bill might go right. up. But right. but now you understand by hearing me why that is. Right. They're just spending more right. time. So that's that's a great point. To yeah. get more valuable reports that you can make better, de- see things in a, in a more uh, detailed way to make better profitable decisions. Right. So if you're friend or your partner owns a health club and they're like, I got a bookkeeper, it's $50 a week. And the same bookkeeper wants 300 a week from you. That's why. Yep. And that's yep. a good thing because that means that bookkeeper understands mm-hmm. that they're going to be doing a lot more for your business than they would for another business. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Okay. And if they tell you it's the same $50 a week, you know, there's red alarm fire one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Are you sure you're willing to do this extra work? Cause it sounds like maybe you're not, you're just going to ignore everything I just said and just that, do the way you right. want it. Right. That's like me. It's like, Oh, you want motorized shades? Sure. Same price. Really though? Is it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like the kind that like you push a button. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> Okay. All right. Now, another thing that you have done is you have come up with this industry standard 
data guidebook. Okay. Now this is not a free download on your website, but you know, Steve, uh, you know, I have to say, I always feel like, you know, that you, you, you're just too kind. I have to tell you. <laughs> I just I've like, heard that before. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And so for, this is 497. I think it's, incredibly valuable. So what's happening with this industry standard guidebook is you are taking the experiences of all of the interior designers that you've worked with and you're compiling data. Now, not people's names, not their businesses, but the average of this, and this is what most that. So tell us the types of things, because these are the questions that people ask all the time. What does exactly. it cost to have a junior designer? What does it cost so to blah, blah, blah? We've talked, you and I uh, have talked about this years ago, I think. And it was like, you know, it'd be great is if you did this. And then my clients were like, you know, it'd be great is if you did this. And I'm like, when? But it was very how? important for me to, and when and how, right? I've yeah, got all the, like I said, I got a ton of people who want to work for me in, in this industry. <laughs> um, but it, I, it was very important for me to do. And it was like, well, if anyone has the data, it's me, right? It's you. So how am I going to do it? So what I did was first I split up um, three different business sizes, uh, 250 to seven. I'm talking gross revenue here, top line revenue. 250,000 to 750,000, 750,000 to 1.5 and 1.5 to 3 million. So if you're over 3 million, you've been over 3 million, maybe you're like, well, I don't care. And it's not for you. But most, I think most of the people who are listening to this fall between that. Okay. Now what I did was I split it into three reports. So you want access to all three? Be my guest. It's the same price. You want access to one and you're like, I'm happy where I'm at. Sure. And then if you're close, exactly. Um, And so what I did was I analyzed the data from 2019 to 2022, and I looked at trends to figure out uh, what was happening. And basically I looked at, you know, I looked at revenue. I looked at gross margin. I looked at average of how much people are paying employees based on average, how much they're billing out. Um, and what I also did is, uh, yes, there's no names. There's no like, oh, who, who, you know, this person's been on the podcast five <laughs> times and Peter's going to tell me exactly how much they make. None of that. I got to yeah. tell you. Um, <laughs> but I did allocate, um, I did allocate the clients in every, uh, in every business size throughout the country to make sure mm. that it was a, uh, it was a, a thing where, you know, was every, to New York yes, designers, right. I didn't just pick everyone designers. in New York city and people in Iowa are like, are you serious? Yeah. This right. isn't the same thing. Come on. <laughs> um, so th- th- that's that in the payroll side, I did also break it down by um, West coast, uh, uh, Midwest and East coast so oh. that you kind of can see, cause some of it, honestly, some of it uh, came out the same throughout the country. And some of that information changed just because of wow. how the country is. So that's a, first of all, it just like the first explanation, it's an incredible amount of work that you have yeah, was, gathered. Uh, I didn't even mention that uh, I realized, okay, I built this report and I know all my clients would be like, now Peter, explain it. Cause I'm not reading this report without any explanation. So then I was like, I got to record videos to explain it. So I recorded separate videos of about 25 minutes long of each section Whoa. to explain it. So if you buy the report and you want to just download the report and you're like, I don't want to listen to you any longer, you can do that. Right. If you're right. like, I only want to listen to him talk about the payroll information, you can do that too. It's right. all up to you. You do whatever you want. You do as much or as little as you want. But yeah, it was just one of those things that so many of my clients, so many people in the industry that I've become friends with were like, why don't you just do it? And then I was bored last summer and was like, you know what? <laughs> I'm finally going to do it. And then it rolled into I have a I wife think, and twins. Yeah, and I'm whatever. I'm so summer. bored. And then I think it was like January and I still wasn't done. And Nicole Heimer was like, I was like, I don't think I'm going to be able to finish it. And she was like, you've been talking about this for a year and you're not going to. I'm like, fine, I'll just do it. Do it. It's done. It's done until next year when I have to do it over again, right? Oh, my God. I love it. I love it. You know what? You were talking about Nicole Heimer of Glory and Brand. And, um, of course, we both work with her, and she creates our quizzes and all of our things and all the stuff. And she does. She is the most amazing partner in things like this because she does just not even in – there's not one bit of – 
judgment, not one bit of recrimination, but man, does she keep you accountable, doesn't she? Oh yeah. And when we, <laughs> when our work was done, uh, cause she's great with the weekly meetings. When our work's done, I was like, I'm going to miss our weekly meeting know, so that you I know. <laughs> can tell me what I should be doing. Right. She said, get off the beach, go shave, get dressed and get your, uh, get your work done, please. <laughs> Oh, my God. All right. So in the nitty gritty, I love some of the things that are included in this report. And just to recap what you said, you know, you're covering these different areas. What what designers are billing hourly, right? What designers are paying for the different levels of um, employees in their firm? What I I'm imagine average project size, like what yep. other types so, of things are in there? Yeah. So um, the payroll was really important. And so I broke it down in like, what's the average owner paying themselves in that, in that, and you can kind of see how Whoa. that moves around and that, and that's important for owners to know, like, am I paying myself too little, too much, whatever. Um, Wait, I don't want to stop you right there. So here's the thing. This, knowing that the data came from your clients. These, this is real. I, but, but I'm also going to make the next assumption is that on average, your clients are paying themselves better than your garden variety de designer out there because you are assisting them all throughout the year on monitoring their profitability. And when your profitability is monitored, then your own paycheck mm -hmm. can go up. Yep. So I, you know, just there saying that. There was nobody that had zero for uh, exactly. not paying myself. And probably nobody paid themselves 45000 either or 20000 <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Um, what was interesting, though, I, I have to say, when I was doing the analysis and it came out and I had my detailed spreadsheet, which, by the way, it's a, it's a beautiful report. It's not a spreadsheet. <laughs> but um, when I was <laughs> looking you, at Nicole. the spreadsheet, I'm looking and I'm like, wow, I can't believe, I even can't believe that. But what I found was um, – People were timid to pay themselves out as much as they should, obviously, yes. while we yes. were going through a pandemic and it worked yes. itself out and it's yeah. fine and they're pay paying themselves. Um, but even I was a little, you know, I'm, I'm doing this every day and I was a little shocked by, by the results too. I'm glad. Um, I tell designers that I'm working with all the time. Give yourself a paycheck. Guess what? You're the boss. If you don't have the money in six months, you can stop. <laughs> right. But but the thing is, what I know is it's the habit of paying yourself. It is the habit. And I have come across many designers, three, five, six, eight, ten years in business that have never developed the habit that the line is, well, no, I do pay myself, but I do an owner's draw sometimes every month, sometimes every two months, sometimes when I need it. And what happens is I also will often find that by the time, because then I ask the next question. Now I want to know exactly what was your owner's draw last year. And sometimes it is 80 or 100,000. And so to my brain, and I say to them, I said, if you've been able to two years in a row take an owner's draw, randomly of a hundred thousand. Can we not just put you on the payroll like a big girl, like a grown up person? Can we not just do that? Do yep. And I'm even fine if you took a hundred the last two years and you want to put yourself on the payroll for 80 K and then take 20 at the end of the year. But I'm I, Vinny ingrained this in me. If it is not part of the cost to be open, it makes it hard to push yourself to reach that number. Yep. And uh, working with clients over the last six, seven years, whatever, even through all of the stuff we've gone through, it's funny how we can, you can, it, what I'm trying to say is anything can be changed by the end of the year, right? So I'll always tell my clients, especially this time of year, we're keeping the same salary as last year. And they're like, well, it's quiet right now. And I'm like, I know. But then when we meet in the fall, you're going to be like, oh, my God, my numbers. Blah, blah, blah. And we're behind. And then we got to catch up. So let's just stick with what we got. And if, God forbid, something happens where, you know, you didn't, something didn't happen, we can lower it. We can turn it off. Yeah. We can, we can lower months. it, turn it off. It's your business. You call your accounting company or your bookkeeper and you say, reduce my salary the, the next six weeks by 20%. Like, yep. But the thing is. You don't. That's the thing. Unless you're in truly acute crisis. Instead, what you do is you look and you go, oh, there's going to be $1,500 deducted from my bank account on Friday and the next Friday and the following Friday. And I better get to making some phone calls to close some deals. Right. Right. It makes yep. you move. Right. Yep. 
Yeah, and it's super yeah. important. So the yeah. payroll part between that and the uh, and the uh, other employees, that was super important. And then I broke down like, you know, what the average gross revenue is for, uh, you know, in that business size so that you can tell um, what is uh, the average like uh, gross profit on, on, on product uh, in that in those because it changes as the company gets bigger right so some Mm -hmm. of these and then i broke down you know your average overhead per month what's everyone paying total overhead what's everyone paying rent you know can i like i'm working at home i think i want an office i don't know if i can afford it but i know people in my business size are paying 1500 bucks a month for an office so i should too and i talk about some of the standards of like what you can kind of look at and what's too much based on your numbers and that kind of stuff um we broke down like advertising and photography and Mm. uh all sorts of other fun stuff uh and then we also broke down um bottom line uh net income percentages and and what a healthy percentage is and what it was coming out to be that was actually really um uh shocking too um so Mm -hmm. Uh, you can hear it in my voice because I, I give my opinions on why the numbers are what they are. I also explain what it, so you can understand what it is, but also an, an opinion on it. Um, and I did it right after I was done. So I feel like if you're, you might listen to oh. something, you might be like, he sounds surprised. I was. <laughs> I didn't memorize four years worth of data for every single client, <laughs> but it was very interesting when you accumulate all of it together, like how things ended up coming out. But isn't that also the actual proof of why data needs to be collected? Because you think you think you know, Mm -hmm. and then you don't. So I know, you know, Vincenz is a lunatic with data, and we've got every single, we have sales logs going back to 1981. We can click in an Excel spreadsheet now and pull up November 1983, and we did, you know, $28,000, and we can pick out November of 2003 and pick it out, right? And the thing is, what I love about all the data that we collect at WindowWorks is it serves two purposes. It literally shows you the trends and it shows you, you know, okay, it might be really hard now in January and February, but it's always been hard in January and February and it always gets better in April and May. So just hang on, right? But it also eliminates and and it does go to inform to your point. Sometimes we're like, oh no, we always blah, 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 blah. And then we'll pull the records up and we're like, oh, we don't always ba 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 ba, and that's important to know. But if you really are just going by your memory, it's it then be, can meld into a made up story of what you think you remember. But the numbers and the data don't lie. Yep, time right? flies too. So you know, yes, it's hard to remember everything. <laughs> so you have all of these different categories and you can read it as a report. Then you have the video of you explaining it and sharing your observations and the how and the why, the how and the why, the how that the numbers are derived, why they're important, and also what your opinion is on you know, where the good and the bad and the ugly and where you might need to look for improvement if you're one end or the other, right? Yep. Yep. And if I thought that the numbers looked a certain way, there are some things where I was like, you know what, this is strictly because of the pandemic and hopefully 2023 is going to look more like 2019 and 2019 is included. So you can kind of see this is what the industry looked like in my business size before everything hit the, hit the, hit the ceiling. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, So you can kind of compare that and take the other information with a grain of salt as we dealt with all this stuff. And yeah, there's some stuff where it's like, look at that. That's normal this isn't normal and let's, let's make, sh- let's hope 2023 is yes. as, as you know, normal as possible. Are you, fi- it sounds like you are doing the same thing that we have been doing at window works is we have realized that we are recalibrating versus 2019 as opposed to 2021 and 2022. Mm-hmm. We are saying, because, you know, it's a funny thing too, because window works literally Every single year since its inception has increased its business every year, even in the recession years, every year. And and I shouldn't say maybe there's some years where we were a k- kind of flat, but even flat, if it was 750,000, the next year it was 760,000. Like we've never 
stayed exactly the same or gone low. And there was discussion when we were back in the fall planning for projections for 2023. And there was this big debate among the management team, were we going to go for our minimum projection of 10% over 2022, or our goal, which is always 20% over the year before, because Vinny's always like, shoot, I, you know what I mean? Like, like go for 20%. And we all look at him like 20 more percent. How are we going to do it? He's like, just, just shoot for it. And every month he's like, this is your number. Where are you at? You know, (laughs) blah, blah, blah. And somehow we always do it. And the thing was, it's the first time in our 40 year business career that we have said, okay. And of course, you know, Vinny's got two numbers. <laughs> He's got, all right, we'll do base 20% up of 2019, but this is what we did in 2022. So we want to see this number if we can, you know yeah. what I mean? But is that what you're also finding that, that your advice to your clients is time to kind of recalibrate to 2019? Yeah. Rather than, yeah. yeah. If yeah. you've been in business that long, I mean, before, before COVID, uh, I, we would see this a lot where if I had a client that was, you know, one, one business owner, maybe they have a part-time helper, we'd throw out like the year they were on maternity leave for six months. Like why we're not going to compare that, right? Let's go back and look at what you did when you worked a full year. And then Mm -hmm. this year is going to be a full year. Great. We'll compare the two and throw out in between. And now it's like, you know, being home on a lockdown Mm -hmm. and, uh, installation delays, shipping delay, all that stuff. Do we really want to um, get bent, right? Like, and, and, yeah. and feel bad about looking at these numbers and seeing if we can reach those or should we more? Now, some people's business have completely changed since yeah. then. And so, you know, use your discretion with um, doing that. But um, the other thing I want to say is if you do buy this report, it is not like, me saying, and you know what, if you're in this business size, you should be at all of this. And if you're not, you're failing. Don't think Mm. of it like that. It is just something that you can look at to kind of see and use as an example. Um, But I want you to think about it like, okay, well, these people do this, but that's not good for me. Like, you might be like, I don't really care about how much office rent is because I have this beautiful thing set up in my house. And all my people work remotely and it's great. And I don't care. I don't want you to feel bad about any numbers. I just want you to use the information more to make better, you know, decisions for your business so that that bottom line number, that profitability number, the amount that you want to pay yourself, it's easier to, uh, you know, succeed in those goals that you have. To get there. Yeah, no, I, I, you know, the concept is um, not lost on me. You, you know, you know that Window Works was originally a franchise back in the seventies and the eighties. Um, it disbanded in the early, early nineties, and the same with Exciting Windows. Exciting Windows is not a franchise, but Exciting Windows is a collaboration of window treatment professionals. And literally, Peter, every Thursday, we run through our numbers. 40, 50 people on a Zoom. And we're like, what was your what was your gross sales last month? What was your gross profit last month? What was your close ratio last month? How, what was your referral ratio last month? You know what I mean? It's like, because what happens is when you do understand what is quote unquote normal, it helps you see simple things. Like if you were to look at this report and literally the the median income of someone in your demographic that is in the report your 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 um income of gross um sales level is 30 40 50 thousand dollars more than you yeah it's not so oh hey you're bad it's just like think about it maybe can you make changes because other people with businesses this size are doing this. Mm -hmm. And it's just that mind switch of, you know what it is, you know, my partner in exciting windows, Steve Burston always talks about the story of, is it Roger Bannister? I think his name is that broke the four minute mile. He was like the first human to run a four, a, a mile under four minutes. And it was back in, I don't know what, 60s, 70s or whatever. But the thing was for years, it was fully accepted as belief that it was physically impossible for a human to run a mile under four minutes. And the the day he broke it, there's some crazy figure like within a month, a, a year, like 
hundreds of people did it because they just, it was like now possible. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what the report is. It's not to make you feel bad. It's not to do, it's just a device to help you think and plan and dream and understand that this business that you love can support you in a way that you deserve Mm -hmm. if you run it properly. Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 And it's not just, I just told you about one other person either. It's a accumulation of a, a lot of different businesses throughout the country that are doing it. Yes, because you're right. When you sit next to somebody at Luann Live or High Point or whatever, and they say, oh, they pay their senior this, and they pay their studio rent that, and they pay themselves this. If any of the numbers feel undoable to you, you simply, you do. You just say, yeah, right. That's, you're not normal. And it's like, well, this is what's normal here. This is the Mm -hmm. average of what's happening. Yep. Yeah. I love it. And you get this also just go to the designercpa.com and it's right there. Yep. You can shop the resource lab and I've got all sorts of templates and um, other stuff besides that. But obviously I did all this work. I'm really excited. I'm most excited about this right now. Yeah. Yeah. I love the other thing. We didn't mention this one. The, um, Based on your business size, the average in overhead per month and per year. That's the Vinny's cost to be open number. Yes. Right? Yep. And I, I, I got that question a ton. Like, hey, how much really should my overhead be? Right, right. And you know, it's funny because you know Vinny's got all the formulas for that. If your gross revenue is this, you should be in this. If your gross revenue is that, you should spend this on marketing. Your owner's package, your employee's packages, all of that. But what is accepted you know, business practices and is one thing and what is actually happening. Right. Could yeah. Be I mean, you can Google stuff and get certain like rules of thumb. Right. Uh, and they're going to tell you the rules of thumb for every single business and every single size and every single industry all combined into one. And we know it's that that's this, always yeah. the same. It's like, and this is really, you know, it's what I always say in my experience, this is your, in my experience, this is the actual data. <laughs> yep, yeah. Yeah. I'm living exactly. it every single day. So. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm super excited. And I think that this is a great report. I think that I, I just know from the chairman of the boards that I've worked with for the last three years, this is valuable information. I feel like it's something that every designer should have. It's like, If it were a book on Amazon, I'd be like, I'm sorry, you have to have it. Like it just for $497 to have this sort of information and all the different ways that you can use it to just expand the way you think about your business. I think that's the, the, that's the worth it right there for me. Yeah. So, all righty, a work of love. Now I'm going to see you at Luann live in November, aren't I? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to the beach. (laughs) I can't wait. <laughs> Orlando is the best possible place to pick for a cold person in New England. Are you bringing the kids no, and your wife? No, oh my no. God. Well, you know what? My wife can come, but the kids are, they have school. No way. I'm not getting I stuck going you- to Disney again. Heck no. No way. Been there, did it. Not doing it again. See, I actually thought that you might have them fly in like the last day and then spend the long weekend at Disney. No, I'm going to spend the long weekend by myself. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got to get your wife. At least get somebody to take your kids. <laughs> I said, do you want to go to a uh, interior design conference for three days and hang out with me? And she looked at me and was like, I don't know. I think I'll go and, you know, shop yeah. and enjoy By myself. the pool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I'll see you later. Yeah. That's it. A hundred percent. I'm glad. I'm glad she's coming though. Yeah. So I, I'm happy about that too, because um, it's going to be fun. It's going to, I feel like it's a, like a little mini reunion of our co-authors too, because been, we haven't seen each other. Yes. It's been a long time. So. I know. I know. And that was fun when we did it in 2019. And so doing it again, it's going to be good. Awesome. Yep. All righty, my friend. I appreciate you so much. I love, you know, your calm, stable voice of wisdom when it comes to our finances and tracking them and mostly, you know, using them and analyzing them. You know, we can make the money all day long, but if we don't stop and look at it and understand what it really means and how we use that information that we learn, we, it makes it very hard to make strides in our business, right? Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All righty, Peter. Thanks tons for joining me today. Good to catch up with you. (laughs) 
So maybe you've already gone over to Pete's website and clicked buy now on that report, right? Good for you. And I hope you do if you have it, because this is wildly important stuff. Sure, we can wing it. We can say we're making enough money and things are are going okay. But let's be honest, a resource that can easily reference and cross check against your own numbers will show you where your business stands and precisely what the next level looks like so that you can take the steps to get there instead of just throwing the spaghetti at the wall. I have to tell you, at Exciting Windows, we do this every single month. We compare our numbers in real time. As a business owner, it is incredibly helpful to understand what other people are doing. Just from an objective data standpoint, it really, um, you know, when things are in a downturn, you see they're in a downturn. When things are in an upturn, you see they're in an upturn. When you see that somebody is paying way less or way more in a particular uh, product or, you know, line item category, it's just helpful. And that's why I love this report. I'm so glad that Pete put it together. It's incredible. He is the guy with all the numbers for this industry. And he is literally the only one who has access to all of this data. All right. Now, he dropped some other insights on us today. So let's take a walk through those. First of all, cash versus accrual methods on your tax form. Peter recommends checking that accrual box, especially if you offer any kind of product, which I'm certain probably the biggest majority of the designers in the industry do. All right. He gave us a great example with that November to December um, deposit for goods, but not yet purchased. Right. So remember that and don't get stuck prepaying taxes. Next, bookkeepers. Get a good one. Not all bookkeepers are equal in terms of the services they can provide, especially to you as an interior designer. And let's be honest, this is a bit of a high maintenance industry. And I don't mean that negatively. I mean that in all like kneel on the ground awe. There are so many moving parts to your business compared to the regular garden variety business. And so what Pete says is, you know, You have to find a bookkeeper who understands that. All right. Now, we didn't talk about it actually in the show, but I want to point this out because when Pete sent notes over to me, one of the things he said, and we didn't get to it, was that he advised hiring a trusted bookkeeper that comes from the industry. Right. So even before you hire a CPA, because a CPA can't give you tax or financial advice without reviewing detailed financial statements. So this is good to know is that the right bookkeeper is the right first step and then the CPA is the right second step. Okay. Now, Peter has more resources online at the designercpa.com, including his chart of accounts, which is a QuickBooks online accounting integration customized for interior design firms. He has a budget template there and other things, okay? Great tools for understanding your finances, cash flow, and your bottom line. Pete's website is also where you'll find this industry standard data report. It's also in the resource lab. I recommend getting this and put it to putting it to work for you and your business. Okay. Remember, just because benchmarks say something, okay, just keep this in mind. That doesn't mean you have to match that number or percentage. It just gives you what's happening. You might be over achieving in an area, you might be underachieving in an area. And all that means is it's something for you to look at. You might have exact logical reasons why one or the other might happen. The idea is though, to be informed. That's really the bottom line. It's to be informed. If you're way over or way under on something and you can literally point to why, well, great, (laughs) then don't worry about it. But if you can't, it gives you something to sink your teeth into and start to investigate and start to figure out if you need to make changes. All right. This is the kind of thing that you need to run a profitable business. All right. Now check his website out. Like I said, the designer CPA, you can take his free instant assessment there to help you determine which project management software might work best for your business. You can also shop the resource lab for his interior design industry benchmarks report. All right. 
Okay, and I also can't end the show without mentioning that he is teaching a course at Lou University this spring semester 2023. If you're listening in real time, we are in registration right now. Go to luannuniversity.com to sign up for Peter's class. It's a three-hour intensive. It's called Securing Financial Success for Your Business, and it will be held on Thursday, June 8th. It's a one-day, three-hour, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, get all the goodness out of his brain and move on (laughs) okay so that's luannuniversity.com pete just love you i just love you to death and i'm just so glad that we became friends i'm so glad that you are here for us in this industry and i am so glad that you are part of luann university and luann live all right thank you so much for showing up thank you for listening i appreciate you more than you'll ever know decide to be excellent Thank you for joining me today. This podcast is a production of Luann Nigara, Inc. If you want to know more about me, my books, or Luann University, go to luannnigara.com. And if you are interested in having Window Works help you with your next window treatment or awning project in the New York, New Jersey metro area, go to windowworksnj.com to learn more. Have an excellent day.